Hi there everyone. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, today we are going to make embossing folder storage. Um, if you, any of you have watched my other video, I showed you a binder system that, that I store my embossing folders in. Well, I would like to show you how you can get more folders in one page protector. And uh, we're going to be using the Fuse tool. And I have the Becky Higgins Project Life one. And you want to let that heat up for a good half hour before, before you start. You're going to need a piece of chipboard, and I'll show you why in a second. You also want to have a piece of cardstock that's the size of your page protector. Um, and we're going to mark it as to where we're going to fuse stuff onto our page protector. So, um, the page I'm going to be making is going to have um, 12 um, embossing folders in it. So you can have 12 on one side and you could flip it over and have 12 on the other side. So you're also going to need a just a regular 12 by 12 page protector or you could do this in 8.5 by 11 if you like. Um, it's easier to find binders that size that aren't that expensive, but you'll just have to measure carefully and make sure that you you have the right amount of space and stuff. And you'll also need page protectors that you don't mind cutting up. So I've got a few of my um, page protectors from my embossing folder binder, and these ones are the We Are Memory Keepers um, 6x6 pockets. So there's four pockets I don't know if you can see this. There are four pockets on a page, and I just find that the 6x6 ones are a really good size for your regular sized embossing folders because they, they just fit so nicely in there. So there is going to be some waste, so you'll also have to not mind that you're going to have some waste. Um, there are other things that you can use the Fuse tool for in using up your scraps of, of plastic as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to move this out of the way. We're just going to cut a couple of these apart. So I've got my scissors here and then I'm just going to cut along this line. I actually want to cut um, so that the, the right side of the, the folder is still intact or the pocket is still intact. And that's going to leave the left side open, which is okay. And we're going to do the same with with this way. We're going to make sure we have a bottom that is connected. And you can totally fabricate these completely from scratch. I just find it works better if you have um, a couple of sides already um, attached. So, so there we've got just a piece of plastic. And now we're going to take our regular page protector and we are going to insert the piece of chipboard because you do not want to fuse these two together. I mean you could, but it, you won't be able to use the other side then. So we're going to slip that inside the page protector. Let's see which way this goes here. And you want to use some good quality page protectors too because these are going to get a lot of wear and tear so you want to make sure that that they have a good strong plastic base to them. Okay, so here I have drawn where my fuse lines are going to go. So I'm going to work from uh, right to left and that being because this one is going to go on first. So we're going to have our embossing folder in the pocket and this one's going to sit like so, so that when when we um, go to use our our, um, our flip pages and stuff like that, that it just ni lies nicely flush with with the page from from left to right. So, so okay, this I've already marked, so so I'm going to have 12 um, folders on one side. So I've measured the size of my 
my embossing folder, which is approximately four and a half. You want to give a little bit of room, about a, a quarter of an inch of room, so that your, your folder fits nicely into the pocket without stressing it. And then I'm going about an inch and a half on each of these, maybe a little bit under, so that I have six lines. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, well, this will be the sixth line over here. So, so we want to insert this paper into our page protector. This is going to be our guide as to where we're gonna, we're gonna fuse our pockets. So now, as you can see, this pocket is too big for this. So I am just going to, with the embossing folder in, I'm just going to, and you might want to use a ruler, but I don't find it's going to matter too much, about a quarter of an inch past the embossing folder. And then I will take the embossing folder out, and then I'm going to line this up with the edges of my page protector. And you want to make sure that it goes a little bit past this line your first line and it's a good idea to have some tape on hand so I'm just going to use a little bit of washi tape I don't know, am I still in the frame here? so my opening is on the top right here so we want to make sure that we leave that open and then I'm just going to just make sure this is relatively straight and just tape here. And I'm going to tape another one down here. There. And with the tool comes, with the fuse tool comes a metal ruler. You can use any metal ruler. You don't want to use a plastic one because it will melt. And then you just want to line this up. I'm going to totally work backwards here. Um, maybe not. So I'm going to give a little space where that line is. And you probably can't see it from there. But I am kind of going along the line. Now I'm going to take my fuse tool. See if I can get it here. And then I'm just going to slowly run it along here until my plastic is all fused together. And this takes a little bit of practice to get the right um, speed going, that you don't melt through your plastic and that you also have a good um, bond with the plastic underneath. So you're actually going through three layers of plastic. So I just missed a spot right here, so I'm just going to go over that a little bit. Okay, so that should be fused. I'm just going to tape to our right eyes the tape aside here. And I'm just going to give it a little a little tug to make sure that I, I got it got it all right. So it seems to be seems to be working pretty good. So then I'm going to just make sure my embossing folder still fits and it does. So there you have your first first pocket for your for your embossing folder. So now we're going to work on our second one. So I'm going to take another one of these and again I'm going to put it inside the, the pocket here. Let's see which way does this go. It goes this way. So again I'm going to trim. This time I'm going to trim just maybe a little bit more so, so I have a little bit of room to go past the line. Probably like three-eighths of an inch, maybe. Okay, and again I'm going to take this out. And now I'm going to line this up with my next line and the bottom of the, the page protector. I'm just going to make sure they're all lined up here. And then again I'm going to take my tape. Of course my tape is all stuck together here. tape on the bottom, and I'll just do one on the side here, um, make sure I'm not going too much over here, which I am a little bit, so just bring it back this way, 
better to have it a little bit loose than, than to have it too tight and end up ripping everything. So again, I'm going to take my tool, my ruler, and then my tool, and I'm just going to go nice and slowly along here to get a good fuse. Just like so. And there we have our second page. And I'm just gonna make sure it's got a good good adhesion, which it does. Double check to make sure our folder fits, which it does. And we'll continue to go on to the next one. Okay, so I'm just going to trim off the binder piece. And again, we want to leave two sides still attached. And then we'll just continue on. And you could probably, once once you've cut one, you can cut all 12 of your pieces all at once. Just so you can get the same size all the time. So take that out. And I'm just gonna see which way does this go. Like so. I'm going to use it as a template and cut some more. Then, when you get to this very end part, you can actually take this this all out of here and just go along the seam of that's already there, and that way it's not going to matter if you go through all the layers. So I'm going to continue putting all my. Um, pockets on here and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like with the with the folders inside and then we're gonna go to the other side and I'll show you what you can do with some other folders alright so I'm back and I'm just gonna put the last um, folder page on to here and with my tape on there. And I'm just going to go on the page protector line. Now I was having a little bit of problems with with it not wanting to stick so so I um, had to go over this bottom one several times. So if, if you find that it's not sticking then you just need to go over it again. Uh, press a little bit harder, go a little bit slower. So I'm just going to put the last one on here. I'm just going to go really slow. I'm actually putting a lot of, quite a bit of pressure on it just because it's going through four layers of, of plastic so that could be why that it wasn't wanting to stick. Okay, let's see what it did. Okay, it seems to have worked pretty good. So Now, I noticed on my um, page that it is going a little over the top of the page protector so my pockets are going a little bit over but that's okay because the actual um, folder doesn't so we're just gonna take that and trim it off with an exacto knife so I'm just gonna line this up and I'm just going to trim all those pieces off that were overlapping. And as far as um, surfaces go uh, for doing this, you want to have, like I have this giant piece of chipboard that I took off of the back of a picture frame. 
You don't want to do it on your table or onto a cutting mat because the fuse tool will actually wreck it because of the heat. Unless your tabletop is, is fairly heat resistant, you can do it on a glass cutting mat, cutting board or, or something like that. But I just use this big piece of chipboard that I took out of a picture frame. Trim the rest of that off. And so here we've got all our pages. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick a bunch of folders into here. And you can organize your folders by type. So I've got um, basically stripes, uh, diamonds, and plaids, and dots. So I'm just going to stick these in here any which way this time, just for speed's sake, but normally I would I would have like all my plaids in one spot, all my dots, all my stripes kind of together so that I can see them all in one place. So, okay, so not all embossing folders are made the same. <laughs> These Sizzix ones are a little bit wider, it looks like, so let's see if I can find one that it actually fits into without too much trouble. Okay, well we'll just continue what I've got. So, so there you want to um, make sure you're, you're making your measurement to your larger sized, the largest size in that category so that they all fit. So, let's see. That one won't go in there. I'll find one that does fit, I'm sure. Still not. There we go. Had one that had a little bit more room in it. So, oh, I'm going to another one. This one will fit. Oh, I have lots of these. Yeah, so you want to make sure you, you pick the widest ones to go by for your measurement. And I could have just made this, this space just a little bit. I could have moved it over just a little bit. But anyways, there are my 12 folders. And then this can just go in your binder. So normally what I would do is I would stick a piece of chipboard in here just to give it a little bit of strength and that way it doesn't sag. So, let's see, there you go. And so that's this side. This is just the normal, I think it's A2 folder. And then you can you can stick your, your um, pictures on wherever they go to. So you can just stick your pictures on there like, like you would in the other like we did in the other video. So just pre pretend that those are the right ones. And then you have your good you have a good reference as to what folders are in there and you you can get so many in here and you can you can totally make the other side um, the same way and have 24 folders to one one page protector. And so I'm going to show you I'm just going to take all these out. And I'm going to show you what you can do on the other side to make room for our um, embossing strip folders, or border folders, I guess they're called. So this one is a bit tight, but I have more folders in this category, so I'll when I make the next page, I'll, I'll make some bigger ones. And then these smaller ones can go into the pockets that I've made. Let's get all these out. All right, so again, we have our chipboard. And I just marked on here where I wanted the pockets to go. So I've got basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pockets. 
and they are made to fit this size of, of um, folder. You can also stick these in there as well. They'll stick out a little bit more. This is going to be my size line, so I want my pocket to be this size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, oh, where's my, I'm going to take another page protector here, and I'm just going to measure what size that was. And that is, let's just say, five and a quarter, and we can even make it five and a half just to make it simpler. So I'm going to measure this from the bottom, five and a half, and I'm just going to make a little mark here, let's see, I'm going to make a mark, even if I make an indentation that's good enough, uh, five and a half down here, hopefully that was on screen, I didn't quite see, alright, and then I'm just going to take this ruler has a nice metal metal edge to it, so I am just going to take my X-Acto knife and cut along there. Oops. Make sure it stays still. Okay. And I only need really one one side of this, so I'm just going to continue cutting off the other three sides. There. And there. So now I just need one of those. Okay, so now I'm going to get my page protector back here, and we are going to tape this in place, so let's see here, so I'm going to tape it on the sides because I don't need the chipboard in, in here to do the sides, so I'll just make sure I do the opening. Alright, so now I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm just going to do the vertical lines this way along my markings that I have on my paper. And just run them along here. It only has two to go through, so it may not need as much. I'm just going to go over it again, just to make sure it gets a good fusing. And I'm just going to keep going along my lines. And another thing you can do with the rest of this space up here is you can make um, the same kind of um, pages that we did on the back side for your little um, little folders like the, the little 2 by 3 size ones that works good and you can use like a, a Project Life uh, page protector that has the 3 by 4 pockets on it to make those and you get a good uniform amount Okay, it looks like it's adhering pretty good. And just continue along until you have all your pockets made. I'm trying to go a little bit too fast here, so. Sorry, that was my phone beeping. Hopefully these are still... 
that pretty good. Yeah, it seems like it. Alright, and then the last one right here. Make sure I'm See here, I didn't quite get it in the middle here. One thing I don't like about these rulers is that there are these grips, which are really nice for not sliding around, but it does tend to want to um, make it a little bit higher here, and then it wants to skip skip that area. All right, so now I'm gonna just take the chipboard out of here. This is a very well used piece of chipboard. I'm just going to have to maybe release it a little bit. Alright, now I want to go around the outside edges. So it's a little hard to see where everything is because of we don't have the chipboard in there so you're seeing the other pages through the protector. Alright, see if we can get this adhering pretty good. I did notice that my tip was kind of coming loose before too, so I did I did tighten it a bit and hopefully that helps. Alright, so where is the bottom of our oh it's up there. Okay, so And I'm just going to do the side and then I'm going to put the chipboard back in because I think my my um, plastic is a little higher and I don't want to melt through the, the pages on the other side. Okay, so where do you come? Okay, so I'm also going to just kind of slip it here too. That's hot. Um, just to make sure I'm not going to where is that? Right there. Definitely don't want to have this go through to the other pockets. And right there. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to slip this back in there so I can get that bottom piece. Well, it's a little bit tighter because I had to go um, I had to go a little bit past the side there. Alright, so basically our plastic is oh here I missed as well, so I'll have to fix that. I'm just going to go exactly where our chipboard edge is. It seems like that's where the plastic ends. Alright. last bit. Hopefully I'm still on the screen here. You want to make sure this one is really nice and solid because you don't want your embossing folders to fall out the bottom as you're carrying your binder from one place to the next. So I can see this isn't really very deep here so I'm going to try and This very edge here too seems a bit thin. And with practice you'll see which what's a good adhesion and what's not. So, so yeah, we have this side here that didn't want to fit here. Or a piece was a little bit too small and I couldn't see it. So we'll just go along here again.
Alright. So that should be good. Alright, so then you should be able to just slip your... Oh, I can see the bottom is still a little bit. I'll go over that again yet. This is the good test to see whether or not your your adhering has, has worked. And so I'm just going to grab some more. So yeah, then you can have your, you can have all your um, border strips in the back and your um, regular size ones in the front, or you can uh, make it all um, just your regular size ones. Another thing I wanted to show you is when you get the bigger ones, like these are the 5x7 or whatever size they are, so they take up a little bit more space. So you can do the bigger ones and then do the smaller ones sideways up on the top. So then that way you can still get a lot of folders in and not have all that wasted space. You can do the same with, with having your pockets here and then you can do like another row with your little ones or with more of these. Um, you could probably do the bigger ones like this too sideways. So those are the options that you can do. I hope you enjoyed this video and and uh, hope it gives you a reason to use your Fuse tool for other things than just Project Life and stuff. So I'm just going to get this out of here. And there we go. So yeah, I would generally keep a nice stiff piece of chipboard in there just, just so that it stays nice and sturdy in the binder. You may not need it, but it'll just hold it flatter and stuff like that too. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.